I'm really honored to be invited to uh, take part in this uh, uh, historic meeting. And I'm going to be talking about um, the kind of aging that's not necessarily genetic, but in the end, maybe genetics has something to do with it. And this is a chemical reaction in the stuff between the cells, the collagen, the elastin, the fibers that hold the cells together so that we're not just a bucket of, of cells uh, swimming around, but we're actually stuck together by these, these strong fibers. It works. Okay, so I think all of us would share in this objective to repair and reverse the pathological changes of aging for a healthy future. We would like to restore the aged human body to a younger state of functioning, not just slow down aging. Anybody can see aging when they look at it. Um, one of these is my mom a couple of years ago. One of these is my mom many years ago. Um, okay, so far aging research has been slow to produce useful results. There have been a lot of papers published, but we haven't totally rejuvenated anybody yet. Um, so how can we accelerate development? Well, I think this, this meeting here is what we're, um, our objective is, is to um, discuss ways that we can uh, come up with some timelines, some plans, and some budgets to, uh, to do things faster than they have been done in the past. Uh, so before I get into extracellular aging, I'm going to talk about an, an overview of some of the pathways that cause aging damage and some opportunities for interventions. And then I'll focus in on extracellular aging. A number of years ago, uh, initially to um, aid my own understanding of the field, I started to put things into a graphical map. I know you can't read the words on this, uh, but I will put... Um, a three by five wall chart up on the wall later, and we can look at it uh, during our bowl sessions. Um, and you can see how uh, some of these things fit together. Um, uh, the top part of the graph is uh, things that happen inside the cell, things that happen outside the cell, and they lead down to things like cell death and uh, stem cell activity, and they lead down to things like pathologies, Alzheimer's disease, heart disease, cancer, and so forth. So some of these parallel pathways, uh, I would say, are, are somewhat um, independent and primal, and some of them may um, indeed uh, be cured if we cure the, the worst ones. And um, I'm not going to tell you what the worst ones are, except that I think intracellular aggregates are, are very important, as they clog the proteasomes and the lysosomes, which are responsible for turning over um, the waste materials in the cells. And uh, I think that it, uh, we could go a long way towards fixing a lot of uh, aging pathologies if we can fix the intracellular aggregates. I think uh, Aubrey's going to talk a little bit about this later on. Um, I, and I think uh, Bradbury's going to talk about epigenetic alterations, perhaps. Um, uh, we've also got uh, problems with the scaffold of the nucleus. Uh, it's called lamin A that deteriorates. Uh, but interestingly enough, if we fix the intracellular aggregates and upregulate um, autophagy and uh, lysosomal um, turnover, we may be able to fix some things like the nuclear scaffold. Um, but all of these things uh, don't describe what we're going to do about the extracellular proteins, which I'm going to get to in a moment. So some of these intracellular things can be fixed by autophagy, uh, mitochondria, nuclear pores. Um, and of course, all of these things kill cells and eventually organs deteriorate from loss of cells. Uh, this is a, a model of a fluorescent junk accumulating in the lysosomes of heart cells in a rodent. And you can see that with time, you get more and more of this uh, fluorescent junk called lipofuscin or lipofusion. Uh, you can also see the membrane uh, potential of the mitochondria decreases with age, becomes more green in this particular color assay. Um, this is the lamin A protein. Uh, this is the nuclear envelope. And as you can see, it's, it's not just a plastic bag. It's a pretty complex thing. And uh, just a little bit of um, defect in the protein can cause the, the uh, stem cells to be unable to divide. Uh, whether or not they have tel telomeres. So I, th I think we need parallel therapies, 
and as I said, maybe fixing a few critical ones will take care of all of the others, but just in case I decided to be more thorough, um, uh, we need to fix extracellular glycation and cross-linking. We need to improve turnover of the extracellular matrix. We need to fix the amyloid beta in the brain and uh, also the TTR amyloid in the heart. Uh, we need to fix epigenetic alterations in the nuclear DNA. Uh, we need to get rid of the crud clogging the lysosomes, uh, fix the nuclear scaffold, enhance telomerase levels in the cells, uh, delete mutant mitochondria, um, we need to improve techniques for stem cell therapy, uh, and I'm recommending also a blood processing clinic that would remove inhibitory factors from the blood liquid and also remove lazy immune cells from the cells in the blood. And finally, whether or not you do any of these things, number 11 is good for you. Good diet, good exercise, um, intermittent fasting, which means uh, skipping breakfast or dinner a couple of times a week. Um, meditation or calm thinking and getting enough sleep, which a lot of us don't, uh, to keep things in tune. So why is the ECM important? Uh, well, we've got, a, it forms a structural and chemical home for the cells, and the technical word is a niche. And uh, cells live within the extracellular matrix, and they receive signals from it. And some of these signals can uh, make those cells healthier, and some of these signals can make those cells less healthy. And as the ECM ages, it changes by oxidation and glycation, it sends more and more inflammatory signals which are damaging to the cells. It also forms a structural um, uh, bone, cartilage, tendons, ligaments, a meshwork that surrounds the blood vessels so they don't blow out and we don't get strokes at the age of three. Uh, it keeps the skin from falling apart, and uh, it's just a strong meshwork for all of the tissues and organs. It also forms flat sheets uh, in the kidney uh, to filter the blood, and uh, the waste products go into the urine, and the good stuff stays in the blood, which is the way we want it. Um, and extracellular fluids of the extracellular matrix transport nutrients and signals and help to coordinate what's going on in the body so the cells know what each other is doing. Now, these long-lived proteins, collagen, elastin, fibronectin, and laminin, turn over very slowly, and that's the problem. If we turn them over every day, we wouldn't have an aging problem. But these things are around for tens of years, and that gives them time to glycate and oxidize. Uh, the extracellular matrix is a complex environment. You've got these strong fibers of collagen. You've got these stretchy rubber bands of elastin. You've got various other fibers. You've got immune cells. Uh, and you've got a very interesting kind of cell called a fibroblast. And the fibroblast um, makes the collagen and elastin, secretes it, and also it has the ability to digest old collagen and elastin. This is particularly noticed um, when um, athletes or normal people exercise, you get remodeling of the extracellular matrix, and um, much of this remodeling is uh, done by the fibroblast. They chew up some of the old collagen, some of the old elastin, and they secrete out new strands. And uh, this is very important, but it's not happening fast enough. So I'm going to be talking a little bit later about speeding that up. <clears throat> 